Go ahead, Doug. Okay. Uh, I'd like to welcome everyone that's with us tonight, November 22nd, 2020, for the uh, memorial, Zoom memorial uh, for Flashlight, also known as Robert Daneman. Uh, it's 6 p.m. Uh, I'm Chairman Emeritus of Artist Talk on Art, and I'm acting as MC for tonight's event. The artist Flashlight was born Robert Daneman. Uh, and died in his 30th Street loft, his home and studio, on March 27th. We're gathered here virtually by Zoom to honor his memory and talk about him as we knew him. There are three primary speakers, myself, Cynthia Panucci, and Lawrence Wheatman uh, will speak in that order. And then there will be several others who have requested time uh, to talk or to show materials or to relate stories. And I hope that we'll be able to get everyone, uh, give everyone that opportunity. Um, there is a chat function that you'll find at the bottom of the Zoom screen. Uh, if, you, uh, if you need something that's a good place to communicate it, uh, you wanna talk or you are having a technical difficulty, whatever it might be, and Barry and myself will uh, be looking at those and we'll see if we can help you. Uh, Barry Kostrinsky is president of ATOA. The event is being recorded and we're using ATOA Zoom account. Thank you, ATOA. Uh, yes, thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, I was co-founder of Artist Talk on Art in 1974. Uh, in 2019, I stepped back from being chairman for 45 years and became chairman emeritus. On his passing, I realized that I'd known Flash for about 30 years. I never knew Flashlight had another name until about two years ago. The name Robert Daneman meant nothing to me. Until last year anyway, when I was giving a speech uh, related to uh, my life in art and artist talk in art, at the Roger Smith Hotel. Lawrence Wheatman was there. Um, I've known him for quite a while. And uh, he spoke up from the audience and said that Flash's real name was Robert Daneman uh, and that they were lifelong friends. That I didn't know. So I first encountered Flash on what would be the fringes of, of ATOA. He was an occasional member of the programming committee that programmed panels. And he put together a number of, of panels, uh, not just on technical issues, but on all sorts of issues. And he appeared as a, as a panelist on some occasions. He uh, planned other panels and he moderated some. Uh, and that's how I began to, to know him originally. Um, pretty soon though, I, I came to understand that Flash was quite an expert in electronics uh, and particularly in audio video recording and editing and so on. Although Flash never originally made that known to anyone, including me, and certainly never, never in a bragging way, but he was very, very astute when it came to these things. Uh, and it, in fact, I would say that as long as I've known him, which is quite a long time, he still remained an enigma in many ways. You know, he would, there is parts of Flash that he never chose to reveal, or it was, was like um, on a need to know basis. <laughs> uh, so, you know, in the early days of ATOA, we only recorded with audio. And we used just very simple format, Philips audio cassettes. Uh, it was just, you know, a microphone. Sometimes it was actually just the cassette recorder on the table where the panel was speaking, not even microphones, just that simple. Uh, the microphones were only for amplification to the audience. But once, once Flash got involved, <clears throat> which was still in the audio period, we got more sophisticated. Right away, he set up uh, a mixing console, multiple microphones, um, even redundant recording, you know, more than one recorder. 
So he really, he really greatly improved our recording capability, even on, in our audio only uh, phase, which was until 1990. So from 75 and through 1990, we only recorded with audio. So at, at, uh, at first, Flash volunteered to help me uh, and also helping the, the volunteers or interns that would help. Um, but then, you know, as we approached the 90s, he said, we really need to be doing this with video. This is important history. You've already recorded, you know, hundreds of, of events. As we go forward, let's do video. So I, I knew that that was going to be an expensive proposition, but sure enough, Flash donated all kinds of equipment. I, I had some things. I had the recorders, the U-Matic recorders, three-quarter inch. <clears throat> but he donated more audio equipment. He donated cameras, tripods, lighting instruments. And he and I together put together a roll-around cart, which was like one of these big double-door metal um, storage cabinets. We put it on wheels. And we reinforced it with metal bars and padlocks so that we could leave expensive equipment inside it at a gallery for extended periods and not worry about it. And nothing ever was stolen. Uh, but, you know, with, you know, with that, we, we vaulted ourselves into the, into the video era. And everything from 1990 until today <clears throat> is recorded on video. Um, and during, I should add also that during the 1990s, Flash edited 29 minute versions of all the recordings. The recordings are generally close to two hours, hour and a half to two hours. Uh, and so we were able to feed that. We had for almost a decade, a cable channel where we would show every week, the next week or the week after <clears throat> the program that we'd recorded. So there was you people at home could see things, albeit a little delayed, but they could see the same programming that those in the audience would see. Um, Flash had very strong ideas about the look of the recordings. <clears throat> he wasn't satisfied just to be the cameraman or the editor. Uh, he really felt like he was the director, which I thought was fine. Um, because I saw myself more as the kind of executive producer. So he was very, very specific on how he liked to frame things. He liked to, to zoom in very closely on the speaker. He had certain very specific ideas. And he innovated different ways that we could integrate the slides. Originally, it was slides that we were showing uh, or projections and integrate them into the, uh, into the body of the, the main event recording. So I really think that um, in terms of the archive, which is now at, at Smithsonian at Archives of American Art, we owe a, a tremendous debt to Flash for his conception of how to video, how to edit, how to frame, uh, and his sacrifice because he missed very, very few. I would say in all that time that he was involved, perhaps he missed always letting me know three or four times. Mm -hmm. And that's out of many, many hundreds of recordings uh, of events. Um, the other thing too is that uh, when it became obvious that we needed a website, it was he who created the website and managed it and was the webmaster, <clears throat> loaded things on it, uh, maintained some very complex databases on it that also have all gone to Smithsonian. Um, that site is down at the moment. It will be, it's the legacy site. <clears throat> at some point it will return. Um, and then there was another phase when we were, uh, when I was mainly organizing uh, the recordings, audio and video, <clears throat> and then preparing for digitization, which ATOA paid for, uh, before it all went down to uh, to Washington. Uh, he was very instrumental in helping that planning, in interacting with the people at Archives of American Art, 
he really put in a lot of time doing that. So that's another level on which we owe him a great debt. Um, so whenever you think of that big collection, it's almost a thousand recordings now uh, being in that place. It, it's in fact the largest collection of audio and video that Archives of American Art has ever taken in. And to put it in context, from all the years of the Artist Club, which was the abstract expressionist era uh, panel series, only one recording survived from something like 20 years of, of meetings. So it's quite, a, it's quite a, an accomplishment, which he is central to. Um, what else would I say about Flash? Uh, you know, over, over that length of time that he and I worked together on, on recording and, and setting up and putting things away, um, I would often drive him home or take him home in a cab on my way home. Uh, and we got to know each other really quite a bit that way, even though he, he remained an, an enigma. Nonetheless, uh, we really became very close friends. And um, so I have to say that, you know, of course I miss him and I'm sorry, I'm sad that he's gone, but he will really live on in, in my mind and my heart. And really he will live on within the Archives of American Art uh, archive of ATOA. And that's something that I'm sure if he was sitting here with us, he'd be quite proud of. Thank you. Um, so I would like to pass this on to Cynthia Panucci, who is the founder and or a founder and the director of ASCII, which is Art and Science Collaborations, Inc. Cynthia. I, I want to pause one second. Yes. Just one second, everybody. I want to pause because the recording seems to be going to the cloud, but it's not fully connected. So okay. I'm actually going to stop it. Make sure.